welcome to Steel Creek Explorer. I'm your host, park naturalist, Jeremy Stout. The other day I got a phone call from one of our loyal viewers. It was my friend Brandon, who called to tell me that he would love to see an episode on the park's geology. And I told him, I said, Brandon, I think that sounds like a great idea. So that's what we're gonna do this time, is introduce you to the park's geology. And of course, when I say geology, what am I talking about there? Most people think geology is the study of rocks, and they're right, but if you break that word down, geology literally means the study of the earth. That's quite a bit bigger category than just the study of rocks. So here in just a few minutes, we'll introduce you to the study of geology, and after that, we'll take you into the park to learn what kind of stories the rocks here can tell us. Welcome back to Steel Creek Explorer. We are in the Nature Center's laboratory where a lot of scientific research projects are underway. And today, of course, we're gonna teach you about the park's geology. And we're gonna take you out later and learn some of those stories that the stones have to tell us. But first, we have to understand a little bit about what geology is. And of course, like I mentioned, many different branches of science can fall under the umbrella of geology, but most geologists in some way deal with rocks. And of course, there are thousands of different kinds of rock worldwide, but all the rocks in the world fall under one of three main types. There are igneous rocks, there are metamorphic rocks, and there are my personal favorite, sedimentary rocks. So what does this actually mean? When we talk about the igneous rocks, like this granite here, we're talking about uh, rocks that were born of fire. Igneous is, is from the same root word where we get ignite or ignition. This granite came from magma, which cooled deep within the earth, slowly, and then somehow got uh, brought up to the, the surface of the earth where we can find it today. When we talk about metamorphic rocks, that's a big fancy word for literally rocks that have changed form in some way. We think of rocks that oftentimes have beautiful crystal layers inside them. A lot of our minerals and gemstones are mined out of metamorphic rocks. So what has happened to change the form of this rock? Usually you start off with a different parent rock and if it gets subjected to huge amounts of heat and pressure, the crystal grains inside the rock at the microscopic level, the crystals can actually realign and change their form to cope with the stresses around them. Sometimes heat plays an important role in this, but the metamorphic rocks can't melt during their metamorphosis. Because if those rocks melt during the metamorphosis, they're not metamorphic anymore, they're igneous, the first one we talked about. Now, both of these rocks are found in this region, but inside Steel Creek Park and throughout most of Bristol, the only rock type we have are the third rock type, and these are the sedimentary rocks. And these by far are my favorite rocks, because while every rock can tell you a story, sedimentary rocks tell you the story of ancient ecosystems because that's how sedimentary rocks form. You take uh, a sandy beach, you put it under a little bit of pressure, you cement those sand grains together. Millions of years later, you might end up with the sedimentary rock sandstone, which is what I have here. You take uh, a nice muddy ocean bottom and you subject it to a little bit of pressure and some natural cements and you might end up with a sedimentary mudstone. Those are how the sedimentary rocks form. And because of that, sedimentary rocks are always a piece of an ancient habitat, an ancient ecosystem. And there's so much we can learn about that ecosystem just by studying the rocks that's preserved today. There are three major rock units inside the park. And depending on where you are, that's going to be the bedrock you're gonna be walking on inside this park. So as a very small scale model, what we have is a very thick unit, hundreds of feet thick, of what we call the Knox Dolomite. 
Dolomite is the chemical cousin to limestone. It formed under very similar circumstances. And indeed, this is the rock that is, is ubiquitous throughout our region. The Knox Dolomite is, is one of the most common and major structural rock units of our area. Un over top of the Knox Dolomite, we have a very, very thin, relatively thin band of limestone, which is a true limestone, and this is what we call the Lenore limestone. And this is a special rock unit to have inside the park because even though it's found many places in our area, in Northeast Tennessee and Southwest Virginia, the rock unit is so thin relative to other rock units that very rarely do you find it exposed. And there are some places in Steel Creek Park where we have the Lenore limestone exposed. And then what's arguably our most noticeable rock formation is when you get into the interior of the park, we have a large chunk of the sedimentary rock shale, which sits on top of these other two units. This is the rock that gives us those abrupt knobs out in the interior of the park and the, the very, very steep climbs and rugged wilderness out inside the park. So wherever you are in the park, you are in some level of these three rock units that are always in this relative position. Knox Dolomite, Lenore Limestone, severe shale on top. Well, after the break, we'll take you into the park and see these major rock units in the field. Welcome back to Steel Creek Explorer. We're down now by the creek, by Steel Creek, uh, and this is one of the best places to introduce you to the first rock unit we're gonna tell you about today. And this is the thickest unit of bedrock we have in the park. This is what a formation known as the Knox Dolomite. And as I said earlier, dolomite is oftentimes called limestone because it's very similar to limestone in a lot of ways. And what's really amazing is uh, certain little oddities that pop up in, in this Knox dolomite sometimes. And people will oftentimes bring them to me as what they think are fossil eggs. But what these are, are actually a, a naturally occurring formation called nodules. And these are a different chemical compound as the dolomite itself. This is a rock called chert that oftentimes formed inside a void in the, in the rock. Uh, you got the, the precipitation, the, the laying out of a different mineral inside a little hollow space in the rock, which has a tendency to create these kind of oval shapes to them. Really interesting little piece uh, that was found right here uh, in this Knox Dolomite along the creek. One thing that I love about geology, and especially the geology of our area, is how there are stories in stone. The rocks can tell you a story if you just know how to read them. And right here close to the Nature Center is a beautiful bedrock boulder that'll allow me to show you what I'm talking about. Well, what may at first glance look just like a rock on the beach of Steel Creek Park, there's actually a wealth of information that can tell you about the geologic history of our entire region right here on this rock. This is quartz crystal running through the rock that actually has a, a slightly higher resistance to weathering and erosion than the limestone does. So it's sticking up off the rock. You can feel it with your finger. This came after the rocks were laid down. This was a quartz vein that extruded through, through chemical precipitation into a natural crack inside the rock. So we have the rock, then we have the quartz vein, then what do we have right here? We have more quartz moving in this triangular fashion. And if you look, the vein comes to a certain point, stops, moves about a quarter of an inch up, goes for about six inches, goes right back to a quarter of an inch down and continues on. What does that tell us? This is what we call a micro fault. 
Yes, this is a fault line. This is er evidence of earthquakes right here in Steel Creek Park. Of course, we're talking about earthquakes that occurred a very long time ago, but you can trace where this quartz vein used to be, and you can even see the area where the rock split loose and brought this section just about a quarter of an inch down. So this is an excellent example of how several major events in the formation of our Appalachian Mountains are actually recorded over the course of millions of years and ended up right here on this rock face for all to see. Well, we've just left the micro faults that we showed you, and now we're on the beach of Steel Creek Park where what look like just blue-gray boulders are actually a very special bedrock unit. And this is one of the only places in Bristol where you can see a natural outcrop of the Lenore limestone. This rock formation is found all over our region, but because it's such a thin unit of rock inside our geologic horizon, very few places do you actually find it preserved at the surface. Well, unlike the Knox Dolomite, which we've already introduced you to, that's gray on a fresh exposure and weathers to a, to a more whitish color, the Lenore limestone, because it's a true limestone, tends to actually have a blue-gray color on fresh exposure, and then it weathers to a true gray. That tells it apart from the Knox Dolomite, which is so common in our region. Well, here we are right in the middle of that last paleo habitat that we introduced you to at the beginning of the episode. You remember we showed you how geology could explain the difference in landscape from the nice rolling hills of the golf course on up to one of the steep knobs like we have here. Well, of course, the answer to that all lies in the geology. And here we have a fresh cut of the top formation of rock in the park. It's called the severe shale. What typifies the severe shale is that it's very, very easy to break even with your bare hands. Well, many times folks will see these rocks uh, just eroding out of cuts like this and they'll ask me, do we find a lot of fossils in the severe shale? And the answer is, like any sedimentary rock, you can probably find some fossils, but where this paleo environment, this ancient ecosystem, had no oxygen or very low oxygen at the bottom, there really weren't many things living in this environment. So this is one of the worst rock units in the area to find fossils. When we come back, we'll take you back inside the Nature Center's lab and introduce you to a few of the stranger formations found in the park. I hope you've enjoyed our foray, learning a little bit about the geology of Steel Creek Park. But of course, you could spend an entire career researching the, the park geology right here in your own backyard. And be sure to come down to the Nature Center to learn more of the details. You can learn about some of our oddities that come from the park. Uh, like this interesting piece here that has a lot of unique stories to tell right on this rock. We do have a few places in the park where fossils come from. Uh, several of our rock units can show some, some really unique ancient inhabitants of these oceans that, that used to be here that we've introduced you to. We have unique mineral formations in the park, like crystal quartz points, those beautiful hexagonal pyramids uh, actually formed naturally inside this park. And of course, you can also learn some of my favorite subjects, where the park's geology meets the history. And you can learn about the natural occurrences of flint and chert inside the park, which as you can see in this specimen, actually shows signs that it has been worked by human hands. Probably woodland Indians utilize this very piece of chert that came from the park to make projectile points and tools out of. And lastly, if it weren't for the unique geology right here in Steel Creek Park, 
we wouldn't have a park at all. People are often amazed to learn that Steel Creek Park is the third largest municipal park in the state of Tennessee. And we have that park, of course, right inside city limits. So what spared this park, the development that the rest of the town underwent during its early formation? The answer is the geology. Those shale knobs that are so forbidding to, to even hike too far into that we introduced you to, until very modern times, those were impossible to develop. Uh, early developers could log it for the lumber, but they couldn't build anything there. So the park's bedrock geology is what allowed it to be relatively undisturbed for the 150 years that people started settling in this area and then eventually turned into the park because it was already a wilderness area. So geology is not just the rocks beneath our feet. It truly is the study of our earth and to some degree everything in it. So be sure to come down to the Nature Center, venture into the park with a little guidance from us, but whatever you do, make sure to come down to Steel Creek Park where you can be the explorer.